to do is show you guys how to add some fractions. Um, we're going to work on this first problem here. And when you guys are adding fractions, uh, we need to look at a couple things. First part is we need to remember, you know, a fraction um, is made up of two parts. You have your numerator, which is on top, and then you have your denominator, which is on the bottom. I'm going to be saying that a lot, so you need to make sure you remember that. All right, so um, when adding fractions, there's a couple key points we need to remember. When you're adding fractions, um, without doing any kind of representations um, on the board, just remember your denominator is always going to remain the same. And your numerator is actually what you're going to be adding. So in this case, I have a denominator that, that are going to be the same, since they already are the same. And then I just need to add my numerators. So therefore, 1 plus 1 is going to give me 2 fourth. Next thing, when we're always doing fractions, we always want to make sure we can reduce our fraction as much as possible. So here I have 2 fourths. If I can divide that out a little bit, what do these? Uh, what does the numerator and denominator have in common? Or what is a, uh, a, a factor that we could you know, divide out or factor out? Well, what you can notice is they both can contain a 2. So if I divided the top and bottom by 2, I would obtain 1 half. So therefore, the answer to 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is 1 half. Don't be alarmed that the numerator, you know, the numbers changed. I actually, uh, you know, simplified it. So here, I told you to keep the denominator the same, right? Well, now we have a problem because now I have different denominators. So, crap. We got an issue. Um, to solve for this one, since we can't have the same denominator, since they're not the same, we need to find what is their common denominator. What denominator can they be the same for? And there's a couple ways you know you can do that. We need to find the least um, common multiple between these two numbers so they'll have a common denominator. And the way that we can do that, there's a very easy way, which is always um, to multiply them together, but that doesn't always give you the least uh, common multiple. But a lot of times it will give you an answer that you can at least work with and then simplify later. So the next thing, and just a little trick I just want to add it throughout there as well. You guys see I have this negative sign in front of here. A big misconception that students say is that's a negative 1 divided by negative 4. Negatives divided by a negative number divided by a negative number is always a positive. So therefore that would be a positive one fourth. So I didn't decide that negative to be on top or bottom. Um, so what we need to do is when you have a negative in front, just choose yourself. I'll make that a negative one on top. All right. It could have been on the bottom too. Try it both ways at home or in on your class, whatever, and see how it works. So what I'm going to do is to get these to be the same, I look at them, and you can write your factors. If you're having trouble kind of seeing what is the least common multiple, you can just write out the, fact or, uh, the multiples. 4, 8, 12, 16, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And then you guys see that 12 and 12 is the least common multiple. So what I'm going to do is, so 12 is going to be our denominator that we're going to want to keep or make each one of these. So to get three to be 12, I have to multiply by four. So I'll represent the multiplication by putting in parentheses. Whenever you multiply in the bottom of a fraction, you have to multiply in the top to keep that fraction the same. Um, over here, I now, if I multiply by four, I'm gonna get 16 on the bottom. I don't want 16 on the bottom, I want 12. So I have to multiply four by three to get me 12. And then again, multiply the top and the bottom. So when you multiply fractions, 3 times negative 1 is a negative 3. 3 times 4 is 12. Plus, 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Now, thankfully, I have, um, I have common denominators. So what I can do is keep my denominator the same and then just add a negative 3 plus a 4. So negative 3 plus 4 is going to give me 1, and my denominator is still going to be 12. So my answer to a negative 1 fourth plus 1 third is going to give me 1 twelfth. And that's how it works. I'm going to walk on this side. 